Welcome to the Mad About You podcast. This is a video podcast on YouTube that's mostly about knitting, occasionally some sewing, and just me trying to live my craftiest life possible. Um, if you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, this is the first video for 2020, and I really hope that I'll be a little bit more consistent this year than I was last year. Um, if you are just new and you want to catch up, I only had a few five videos maybe last year, so probably suggest you watch the last one and maybe the first one for 2020, uh, 2019, sorry. Um, so yeah, so today this probably won't be a very long episode because Knitting Mojo is slowly coming back, um, but I just wanted to share a few things about um, what I'm doing, kind of what I'm up to, and my plans for this year, um, of which there are not a lot. So yeah, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, this is my new space. So I um, moved into a new apartment maybe three weeks ago um, and I bought a new bookshelf and um, finally got my yarn all out on display. So I'm really excited. Usually the space has more sunlight. Um, so Hopefully, um, I can find the right time of day to record for future episodes, but this is, um, yeah, this is my new space and I'm really, really excited. So, um, yeah, I don't really know. I guess we should start with works in progress. And what I've actually done is I've now got a basket which has all my current whips in it. And I will probably add on to the end of this or maybe just do a quick separate little video about, um, tour of my new little craft space. This is the spare bedroom in my apartment and um, at the moment it's just the craft room because I haven't bought a spare bed or anything so if anyone comes to visit me um, there's a blow up mattress for now and hopefully I will get around to getting a bed but yeah this is just kind of a chill space um, at the moment. doesn't have any air conditioning or a fan and it's pretty warm here at the moment so I will probably have to look into fixing that. Um, so I guess we'll start with my most worked on work in progress um, and that is my Pure Joy by Hohi Locatelli and I'm keeping that one in my Stitches Tees yarn of all bag. So the, um, this is the pattern which I have shown several times on here um, and yeah, so I am on the last wedge, if anyone sees me on Instagram, they will know. I'm just playing a little bit of yarn chicken with my short rows here. Um, I've got two left. Now, I think maybe the last episode and the one before that, I spoke about the big mistake that I've made. And I still couldn't figure it out, but I ripped back and I've, I've actually figured it out. So it's a painful pattern, so I don't want to talk too badly about it, but if you move the back. If you see in here, this last one I've gone all the way across in this white row, and then in this one I've made, sorry, so these two wedges here I've made mistakes, but I mean, when I'm wearing it I don't think you'll be able to notice, and I was actually just showing you the back, so this is the front. It's growing quite large, and I think it will, it will block out quite nicely. I wasn't super sure about the colours together for this particular pattern, but the yarn is um, one of the sister duos by Nicole of Hugh Loco. And I'll just show you how much I've got left. So um, I have got two more wedges to do and I've got this much of the main colour and a whole heap of the second colour. So the pattern actually says that you'll need more than one skein of this, the biggest colour or colour A. And I only have one so it's going to work or it's not going to work but my stitch count is back on track so um, I'll just fudge it a little bit if I have to and like I said it's already got mistakes in it so there's no way that I'm going, um, no way that I'm gonna rip back again and redo it. Um, the shawl is called Pure Joy and I did hope that it would bring me lots of joy when I was making it but unfortunately that's not been the case and that's nothing against the pattern I just don't think I read it properly and then it's been so haphazard like my start stop start stop of it I just needed to probably reread the whole pattern again before I kept going and I didn't so that's yeah anyway 
silly of me, but okay. Um, I I got a, like a basket where I'm storing all my whips, and I've actually found these socks, and it's a knitting X pat pattern from one of her. I think the 2018 sock club because I joined and I only made two pairs from it. So um, I feel like these are just going to get frogged. So um, I don't really think. I think the, the Derive socks are knitting expert. Again, I've realized I don't like pattern socks very much. Um, and I'm not really knitting socks at the moment. So that's. Um, another one um i think this is another sock whip possibly oh no i cast on the harlow hat was it or the vanilla fog by andrea maori on some blicker needles and i got about this far <laughs> before i made a mistake and couldn't fix it so it's a brioche um brioche hat pattern and i was just using some knit picks that was originally going to be in a find your fade um so i'm fairly sure that's going to get frogged and um, I will probably donate the yarn to a local group. Now my next are kind of current-ish whips. So I've shown you this one before, this beanie, um, which is just a Clarketon pattern and the yarn is what I bought in Paris. And it's a Tweedy yarn. So um, yeah, I actually have knit too much now and I need to swap to other needles so I can decrease which to me kind of seems a bit funny because like I know this is supposed to be a really long brim that you can fold over well I guess like when you look at what's left it is probably time to start decreasing but anyway the yarn's been interesting to work with I've quite liked it um I don't have the ball with me but I used not quite one whole ball of the blue, and I'm on the sec. No, the first for the pink as well, so there'll be some leftovers. Um, oh no. Fix my hair quickly. Um, so that's that one, and I will hopefully finish that maybe in the next week or so. Um, but my pure joy is taking all my time up because I've really been trying to finish that. I really just want it out of my life because I've got it something else I want to cast on. And then something I haven't shown maybe ever on the podcast, I'm not entirely sure, um, but I haven't knit on this since June last year, and I'm fairly sure it doesn't have needles attached to it right now. Um, or maybe it does. It does. It's my Weekender by um, Andrea Mary. I've actually done quite a bit of this. Oh, wow. Might have to get back on it. I think I have separated now. That looks like that's on waste yarn. And I must be doing the back or the front panel. God, I don't even remember which is the back and the front. I think it has a high low hem, so that would be able to. Alright, so I'm currently knitting on the front. Um so yeah, that's quite a bit done. Maybe I'll be, hmm, lots of pleasant surprise. And to be honest, I'm glad I still got the needles bloody attached because I'd have no freaking idea what I was up to. Um, and the yarn I'm using for this one is Bendigo Woolen Mills and it's a, oh geez. No, it's okay, I thought I'd lost the rest of it. Um, Bag. It's Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury in the colour steel. It's a 10 ply iron weight. Um, so yeah, this is the weekend of jumper, which I was hoping to have finished for this winter. And you know what? That probably could happen. Um, it's going to be quite big. Like it is supposed to be oversized, but I think my gauge was off when I made it. So it's actually going to be super slouchy, um, which is fine. Uh, I don't know how flattering that will be and also it's bottom up and I've never knit bottom up before so I'm really intrigued to see how this one goes um yeah I've actually done a lot more on this like you can't really see the color but I feel like I've shown you the yarn before on a previous episode um so yeah I guess if you're new and you haven't watched for a while I um traveled for most of last year for work 
Um, so I, yeah, really wasn't around to, and I could only take kind of certain projects with me. So I did not knit on that much. I got the pattern here. Got a whole lot of paper in this bag. Uh, no. But I've got this little book that I used to um, keep notes in for my knitting projects. So of my 2019 make nine, I made one. I cast on uh, one, two, I cast on four, finished one and frogged one of those as well. Yes, yeah, so I do have some notes about my weekend now. That's handy. Very handy. Um, so yeah, I suspect that will get some work on. But I, and I probably should now is probably the right time because it's February. Um, yeah, so they're my current works in progress. But you know what, I think I will frog those, the socks and the beanie because um, I really don't think I've got any need for those. I have no finished objects because I've barely been knitting, like I said, um, but I'm excited to get back into it. I've made a little a coffee date with a friend of mine who's a local knitter. Um, I haven't seen her in about six months, so we'll catch up on Saturday and we'll have some knitting time. And yeah, so um, I guess I'll talk about something that I want to make. And I think I've shown you these before in one of the haul videos from my trip to Europe last year, but I actually want to make a shawl by Andrew Mowry. And these are the three that I'm going to use. And I um, I bought this Stanwood yarn wonder, um, which has been excellent. And it's here. I also bought, I guess let's talk about acquisitions. Let's just roll into acquisitions. Um, so, put these up there. I bought this yarn winder early, mid last year maybe. Um, when I was living overseas and I had it posted and then I posted it back to myself in Australia because it was too big for my um, my luggage. I also bought an Amish Swift. So I do have an umbrella, like a metal and plastic umbrella Swift, which you push up and it's the one that swings around, kind of like a Hills Hoist um, uh, clothesline. Actually, that's probably only an Australian reference. If you haven't, it's a washing line, clothesline that sits out in, in the garden and it um, basically like goes mostly they go like up and down and um, they used to be really fun as a kid and they like move around with the wind so and you can wind them as well and anyway we had some fun with those as children in Australia I don't think many people have them anymore but it used to be a bit of an institution so anyway I have that one and I bought an Amish Swift which I haven't used yet but when I wind these skeins up I'm gonna give that a go um, my grand plan for this room was that I would have my Swift and my winder permanently set up. Um, but just with how the bookcase that I'm using is, like, it's a great height, but, like, the feeder is over here. Oh, I can move it. Oh, I can move it. Uh-huh. So my plan might work. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Thanks for uh, the inspiration right then. Um, and then finally, I pre-ordered this book, maybe... A few months ago um, and it's the Harry Potter knitting magic it was knitting magic from the films of Harry Potter um, it's an official Harry Potter knitting pattern book by Tannis Gray she's edited it and designed some of the patterns um, so a few people have reviewed this on their Instagram and Insta stories and I really like it like to be honest I don't know how many of these patterns that I'm actually gonna make and wear but some of them like they are stunning so I probably should have like um, paper, what's it called? Like post it noted my favorite um, patterns before we did this. But um, there's like the run of the Weasley sweater um, with all the, and it comes with all the charts for every letter. So that's really cool. A house scarf, which to be honest, if I'm going to make something, it'll probably be a house scarf. Um, then there's the Hogwarts house cardigan, which I really like, but to be honest, I'm probably not going to wear. I do like the pattern though, so I might find some different colours um, to make that. And um, 
there is like a a mobile for kids like a I don't know what they're called exactly but I'm gonna try and find it because I thought it was really cute cutie hmm yeah there's some really stunning patterns in here um like this one here it's like the hippogriff sweater or it's a buckbeak pullover and it's like collar work it's really pretty um, and there's another jumper which looks really cool like there's house colored socks um let me find this if i go to the oh here you go there's a really small picture of it i would really love to make that one day if i have kids um so yeah, like I said, not super sure how many of those I'll end up making, but um, it's a pretty cute book. So that was um, a nice surprise to have it arrive in the mail when I got home. Um, just looking around, I didn't make a make nine this year um, because, like I said before, my statistics from the year before were pretty horrible. Um, that being said, I was traveling a lot and I had some pretty big... Um, personal things happen that was not expected so that kind of turned my life a little bit upside down for a bit but my knitting mojo is slowly coming back I have all of this beautiful stash and also um there's sock on here and then like my thicker weights down here um but I have also gifted and sold or de-stashed um quite a bit of yarn I mostly gifted to be honest um but there's some bigger stash items that I just didn't like if I can get some money from it it's better than nothing and I'm trying to not buy yarn this year because I have such lovely stuff here so um yeah I think I would like to make a magnolia cardigan um and that'll require me to purchase some yarn so my um I haven't really planned or thought about it but I would like to attend the um Mendigo Sheep and Wool Festival it is in June and July June or July usually every year um, I've been saying I wanted to go to that for like six years now, so I think I might actually try and do that um, And hopefully maybe road trip with a few friends from here or Sydney um, Which would be nice. Maybe it's kind of like an overnight thing So I might look into an Airbnb or something or a motel in Bendigo and a few of us could drive down and that might be nice um, Yeah, I think kind of that's where I'm at. I'm probably not going to have enough content to do like fortnightly but I think if I can do at least one a month um, and then if I go to an event or something I'll um, put some more content up if there's anything in particular you'd like to know about or would like to see um, pop a comment below um, and then I haven't really thought about this um, but I wanted to I just kind of say thank you for the people who've stuck around in my absence I had a little um, just As a way of saying thank you to the people who've stuck around while my podcast has been intermittent, um, I've got a little a little giveaway. Um, so I guess um, I was trying to put it as first, and then I haven't actually thought this through at all, so I don't know if there's a prompt or whatever. But um, this is a skein of pickle and co fibers. I don't know that Marnie's dying anymore, or at the moment. Um, but it's beautiful. It's soft. I just don't have anything in mind for it um, and I've had it in my stash for a long time and I I would like to give this one away so it's um, the colorway is Jasmine um, and then also a set of Addy 30 centimeter 2.5 millimeter sock needles so I have a few different circular sock needles and I um, have used these for one pair of socks and have not used them since so um, I would like to give these ones away um, Maybe if you just pop a little comment below on um, what you are most looking forward to knitting in 2020. And I'll, um, if there's a few comments, I'll just random number generate and um, let you know. And I'll just pop this in the post. So, um, yeah, just a small way for me to say thank you to the people who keep coming back and viewing my um, somewhat um, infrequent and all over the shop episodes. Um, so yeah, 
I didn't say it at the top of the episode, but if you'd like to follow me on other platforms, I'm at mad.about.u on Instagram and I'm madbell on Ravelry. Um, most of my Ravelry details and um, my Ravelry page is pretty up to date with um, projects and I try to put project notes in there. So if there's anything that in future, I guess, that I show that you want to know what I've done for, um, definitely pop over and have a look there. Um, yeah. Thanks for being here with me and hopefully I will see you again in the next couple of weeks. Bye.